The swearing in of a state legislator doesn't usually get national attention. Usually. Here's Rita Braver. I, Sarah McBride, do proudly swear. When Sarah McBride was sworn in as a Delaware state senator last month, the constitutions of my she country made and my history. State. So help me God. Congratulations, Senator McBride. Yay. You are now the country's highest ranking elected official who is also a trans person. What's that like? I think it's awe inspiring. I feel a, a, a deep sense of responsibility. In fact, this is not the first time Sarah McBride has made history. My name is Sarah McBride, and I am a proud transgender American. So stay tuned for the story of a person who has packed ages of experience in life and love into just 30 years. She's the strongest, most resilient person I know. But Sally and David McBride did not know for many years that the child they thought of as their youngest son had a secret. From my earliest memories, I remember lying in my bed at night praying that I would wake up the next day and be myself, that my family would be proud of me and judge me on my merits. And see you as a girl. And see me as myself. But even then, McBride had a passion for politics. But at the same time, it did not seem like it was possible to be out and trans and to be involved in politics, whether that's running for office, serving in government, you know, even being on a campaign. Still, McBride worked on the attorney general campaign of Bo Biden, the president's late son, and that of former Delaware governor Jack Markell. I knew this young person had something very special, a number of things that were very special. Uh, one, unbelievably articulate and, and a great orator. Still struggling to fit in as a male, McBride attended American University in D.C. and was elected student body president. But finally, by Christmas 2011, the pain could not be denied. And it it wasn't until I was student body president that I had the, the experiences and the courage and the confidence and the insight that showed me that the things I told myself would heal that pain wouldn't. When Sarah comes to you and says, Mom and Dad, I've got something to tell you, your immediate response? I was devastated. You fell on the floor. Fell on the floor and started weeping. Because? because I felt that she wouldn't be discriminated against at every turn. But despite the initial shock... I knew we were going to be supportive of her the minute she came out to us. Absolutely. I mean, there was never a doubt in my mind. And as the student body president term ended, McBride published this op-ed in the university newspaper. What did it feel like for you to finally be able to say, hey, guess what? This is who I am. Complete and utter relief. The next year, Sarah McBride would make history, joining the Obama-Biden administration as the first openly transgender female White House intern. And it was at a White House event that she first encountered a handsome young attorney, a trans man named Andrew Cray. Andy was the kindest, funniest, smartest person that I had ever met. The two became a couple, even as McBride started working in Delaware. With her parents by her side, at just 22 years old, she led the fight to pass the state's first law that protects transgender people from discrimination. But just as life was looking sunny, Sarah McBride's partner, Andrew Cray, got sobering news. I think everyone fears hearing that word in particular, cancer. It was a sad and scary year-long battle, with McBride acting as Cray's caregiver. I remember um, breaking down and selfishly saying, I 
I can't do this. And, and what I meant was I can't, I need help. To this day, what makes me feel guilty is that in that moment of complete fear for him, he was trying to comfort me. I now pronounce that they are bound there. Finally, the when they learned Cray's cancer was terminal, <laughs> they decided to marry. And then four days after our wedding, he passed away. How hard was it for you to go on and, and go back to living some sort of a life? Incredibly difficult. Um, but then again, I also felt like I saw how precious life was. And I felt closer to Andy going back to work. McBride's work as an advocate for LGBTQ rights helped earn her another historic role. Will we be a nation where there's only one way to love, only one way to look, and only one way to live? In 2016, at the invitation of the Clinton campaign, she became the first transgender person to speak at a national political convention. Thank you all very much. 99% of people in that arena didn't know anything about me. They did know, though, that this was a moment. Winning a state senate seat was also a moment. But she says her life is still not complete. Do you hope you'll find a partner, someone who you enjoy sharing the rest of your life with? I do. There are so many instances, there were so many moments during this campaign where I thought about Andy where I wished I could have him comfort me. And it really reinforced for me how eventually I, I would like to have a partner in life. I've spent the last two months meeting with constituents. With Meanwhile, Sarah McBride is well aware that being the highest elected transgender official in U.S. history has cast her into a bright spotlight. I feel a responsibility to ensure that while I may be the first, that I'm not the last. And so the more examples we have in, the more, in more communities and in more states across the country, the more people will see step up and inevitably the more people will see win.